dugsiyada nuuradiin nuuradiin iskuulis Welcome back to our video lessons. Today uh, we're going to talk about direct and indirect speech in our lesson. Our previous lesson we were talking about uh, essay writings and quantifiers. But today we're going to talk about direct and indirect or rebuilt speech. So what is rebuilt speech first? Rebut speech is used to tell or rebut what other person has actually said. It's a very usual function in every language. Direct speech or quoted speech saying exactly what someone has said is called direct speech. Sometimes quoted, quoted, quoted speech. Here what a person says appears with a quotation marks. There are two ways of relating what a person has said, direct and indirect. Indirect speech, we repeat the original speaker, what the speaker has said, or the exact, exact words of the speaker. We call it direct speech. But indirect speech, we're going to say direct, the exact words of the speaker reported by another speaker. We can say formal aspects. We can find a different ways of expressing the direct speech. John said, John said, it's quite hot today. It's quite hot today. In another way, it's quite hot today, he said. It's quite hot today, said John. So all these aspects, we can say they are direct speech. They are not indirect speech. Because you see these are quotation marks or inverted comma. All of these are reported in the same way, taking the usual word order. Yes. It's quite hot today, he said. It's quite hot today, he said. Sergio, all of them are reported in the same way, taking the usual word order. Subject plus uh, subject verb complement. John said it was quite hot that day. So this is the indirect speech. But these three aspects are direct speech. So we See are the different ways or expressing. It's expressed as a different ways. Indirect speech sometimes called reward speech. Doesn't use quotation marks. We cannot use quotation marks. Indirect speech. To include what the person said. And it doesn't have to be a word for word. So indirect speech cannot be used with quotation marks or inverted comma. When report speech, the tennis usually changes. When you wanted to change direct into indirect speech, we're going to use change, tennis change. This is because when we use report speech, we are usually talking about a time in the past. Because if I say, Ali said, I am sick, he didn't say now. But Ali said that he was sick. Because obviously the person who spoke originally spoke in the bus. The verb, therefore, usually to, ha uh, to have in the bus too. So the verb should be bus. For example, if you have a present continuous in that speech, we're going to change this tennis into bus continuous. I'm going to the cinema, he said. Look at the example, for example. Look at the example. Direct speech. This is direct speech. I'm going to the cinema, he said. 
to the he said he said he was going to the cinema so this is that this is direct speech but this one is indirect speech so how many changes have been here the tennis is present to continuous so we change it past continuous and what about the pronoun personal pronoun i we change he okay this is as a rule when you report something this is the tennis change whenever you are you you wanted to change direct speech or turn direct speech into indirect speech you have to remember the tenses how are going to, uh, to change to each other so as a rule when you report something someone he said you go back a tennis the tennis on the left changes in the tennis on the right so this is this tennis a direct speech and this tennis are indirect speech for example he said it's called she said it's called she said it's called so this symbol bus so this symbol present tennis so we're going to change this symbol present tennis into symbol pass. We're going to change symbol present tennis into symbol pass. For example, she said it's called. She said it was called. So this is simple pass. And this is symbol present tense. So remember, whenever you wanted to change direct into indirect into to this symbol present tennis, Remember that symbol present tense becomes a symbol past. What about past continuous? She said, I am teaching English online. I am teaching English online. I am teaching English online. What is this tennis first? This tennis is present continuous. So how are we going to change now? We're going to change past continuous. She said she was teaching English online. So I become is she because this is the, the, the exact words of the speaker. But there is no paraphrasing. It's quote. But this is a paraphrasing or indirect speech. So I'm teaching English online, she said. She said I'm teaching English online. We're going to say, she said that she was teaching English online. What about uh, present perfect uh, symbol or present perfect is? She said, I have been on the web scenes. I have been on the web scenes. So this is symbol, uh, present perfect is. We're going to change past perfect tense. She said she had been on the web since 1999. Or since 1999. So whenever you have a uh, present perfect tense, and you wanted to change into indirect speech, you have to use past perfect tense because it's very important. OK, what about past perfect continuous? Past perfect continuous. Uh, uh, I mean, present perfect continuous. I have been teaching English for 10 years. I have been teaching English for 10 years. How are we going to change now? We're going to change past perfect continuous. She said she had been teaching English for seven years. So, present perfect, uh, present perfect continuous becomes past perfect continuous. Again, I have been teaching English for, ten, uh, for seven years. This becomes, she said, she had been teaching English for uh, seven years. So we change only the tennis. What about symbol bath? Symbol bath. I taught online yesterday. I taught online yesterday. I taught the teach the path of teach. I taught 
online yesterday. Past perfect tennis. So whenever you, 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 you have simple past tennis and you want it to change into indirect speech, this is the direct speech. This side is direct speech. So we have this tennis simple past tennis. So whenever you have simple past tennis in your direct speech, you're going to change into past perfect tense. Bad perfect and hard, hard. She said she had taught online yesterday. She had taught online yesterday. What about the past continuous or past continuous? Past continuous. I was teaching earlier. I was teaching earlier. We're going to change past continuous, past perfect continuous. Past perfect continuous. Past perfect continuous. I was teaching earlier. She said she had been teaching earlier. She had been teaching earlier. So this is past continuous and this is past perfect continuous. So if you have past perfect, uh, past, per, uh, past continuous in your direct speech, you get a change into past perfect continuous. Okay, pa what about past perfect tense? Past perfect tense, there is no change. When you have your daddy speech, past perfect tense, you're gonna change into uh, uh, past perfect tense. So no change, no change. For example, the lesson had already started. When, we are, when he arrived, she said, the lesson had already started when he arrived. So this is past perfect tense, and this is past perfect tense. So when you have your direct speech, the, uh, past perfect tense, and you want it to change into past perfect, uh, uh, the indirect speech, uh, you're going to use same or similar tense. So there's no change in terms of uh, tense. OK, what about past perfect continuous? For example, this is, and also this is no change. I have already been teaching for five years. I have already teaching for five years. So no change. She said she had already teaching for five, uh, five minutes. Yeah, I mean, five minutes. So this is the most important aspect or point of your target speech. If you can't classify or don't have any idea about how the tennis change direct into indirect, there's a problem. So you have to remember whenever you are going to change direct into indirect, there is a, 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 a different, a different change, like tennis change, uh, pronoun change, uh, adjective change, or adverb change. But this is the most important. So again, whenever you have simple present tennis, change into simple pass. Whenever you have a present continuous, change into bus continuous. Whenever you have a present, uh, present perfect tennis or present, uh, present perfect symbol, change into past perfect tense. Moral verbs form is also sometimes change. What about the moral verbs? We know moral verbs can or could or will or would or should or shall, uh, uh, etc. So she said, she will teach English online tomorrow. She'll. This is short, short form. So uh, she said, I'll teach English online tomorrow. I'll. This is not she. Because the pronoun becomes she. When we wanted to, to change into indirect. So she said, don't, don't say side. She said, I will teach English online tomorrow. This future. So we have moral auxiliary verb moral auxiliary verb moral moral auxiliary verb she said she would teach english online tomorrow or the flowing day or the flowing day so this is indirect speech because this said is direct speech uh, indirect speech and this is direct speech again she said i will teach english online tomorrow what is, what, about, what is the indirect of this one? She said she would teach English 
only tomorrow. So our will becomes good. Remember. What about she said, I can teach English online. I can teach English online. I can teach English. This is direct speech, not indirect speech. Because you have uh, the quotation mark or the inverted comma. So uh, she said, I can teach English online. We're going to change into indirect speech. And we say, she said, she could teach English online. So there is two changes, modal accelerated verbs and the personal pronouns. What about must? She said, I must have a computer to teach English online. I must have a computer to teach English online. What about this one? Hard to. Must becomes hard to in its past. She said, she said, she said. She had to have a computer to teach English online. She had to, to ha she had to have a computer to teach. So what is the change? This is auxiliary verb, must. Auxiliary verb, especially modal auxiliary verbs, because there is a different modal uh, auxiliary verbs, primary auxiliary verbs and modal auxiliary verbs. But these are uh, modal auxiliary verbs. So I must have a computer to teach online. She said she would have to have a computer to teach English online. What about shall? She said, what shall we learn today? What shall we learn today? What shall we learn today? Okay. She, she asked him. This is a question. Question, you see. She asked him, what we should learn today? What? we should learn today. So this is direct speech, and this is indirect speech, remember. So whenever you wanted to change this one, change the auxiliary verbs into past, should. What about me? She said, my eye open a new browser. A new browser. My eye open a new browser. She asked if, why are you using if? Because this is uh, an inter interrogative sentence. Whenever you have an interrogative sentence, you're going to use uh, especially yes, no questions. Not all of them, but yes, no question. When you wanted to use auxiliary verbs like is, am, are, was, will, etc., we're going to use if or whether. Okay, she said, My I open a new browser. She asked it if she might, not me. If she might open a new browser, and there is no quotation mark in here. Note, remember, there is no change to could, would, should, might, and ought. There is no change. You can use present yeah. notes. There is no change to could, would, should. What happened if we use direct speech in this one? How are you going to use it? Look here. You can use the present tense in reborn speech if you wanted to say that something is still true. For example, my name has always been and will always be uh, Ain. So, this is your name. So, you, you cannot change if something is true or universal true. For example, my, uh, my geography teacher said uh, to me last, uh, uh, last year, uh, the sun is a star. The sun is a star. It's still the sun is a star. So there's no change now. So my name is Lane, she said. In that speech, you're going to say she said her name was if she died. Or she said her name is Lane. This is possible. So this is possible and this is possible. So you can change this one. Because 
in our uh, in our last uh, brief slides, uh, we 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 learn that uh, present becomes past. What about this one? Time change. I have already told you that there is whenever you wanted to change direct speech into indirect speech, there is a different change. Tennis change, time change, pronoun change, adverb change, and adjective change. So this is the time change. If the present, uh, if the report sentence contains an expression of time, you must change it to fit in which the time of the rebuttal, for example, we need to change words like here and yes, here and yesterday. For example, if expression of time if rebuttal in a different way, this evening, this evening, you wanted to change this one into direct speech, indirect speech, you're going to say that evening. So this becomes that. When? When we wanted to change direct speech into indirect speech. What about today? Today becomes that day. Uh, yesterday. What about these days? These days becomes those days. Leave the pronoun. Uh, I mean the noun. They cannot, change, cannot be changed. But we are talking about this interrogative uh, demonstrative adjective because this uh, uh, this this not this this and those so this becomes those when you want it to change into indirect speech what about now now becomes then when in the indirect speech during the indirect speech because this is the direct speech and this direct indirect speech what about a week ago do not change a week, but change ago, before. So whenever you have the word ago, we wanted to change before. What about last week, last weekend? The weekend before. Last, or the previous weekend. Two, you have two changes. We're talking about last week. If I, for example, and even the last night or last week or uh, last year, Last, the week, the weekend before last, or the previous weekend. What about here? We get a change there. What about next week? The flowing, flowing. So next becomes the flowing. What about tomorrow? It becomes the next or the flowing day. So tomorrow. It's a future. So how many changes are we going to make now? Number one, the moral accelerator verb. So we'll become his wood. And what about tomorrow? The flowing day. Good. The flowing day. She said she would teach English online the flowing day. OK. And this one, she said, I must have a computer to teach English online. She said she had to have a computer to teach English online today. So today, uh, I mean this one, she said, what shall we learn today? Today. What shall we learn today? We're going to change this one. She asked it because it's a question. She asked it, what we should learn that day. So today becomes that day. Today becomes that day. She said, my eye open and you close her. She asked it, why are we using, she asked it. Because th there is a question in here. It's an interrogative sentence. So we're going to use ask it and if to. Uh, ask it and if. Use of if. The word if. When are we going to use the word if? Or whether? Or whether. Not whether. Whether. But whether. It's made for the interrogative sentences that can, can't be answered. 
Similarly, in yes, that can be answered yes or no. For example, Ali asked, Ali said, do you speak English? This is a question. So how are we going to change? That is which he said to me, he said to me, will you be here tomorrow? Will you be here tomorrow? This is direct speech. So we wanted to change into indirect speech. He asked me whether I would be there the next day. So if you have will, this is interrogative sentences. We wanted to change this verb, ask it. Because there is a, uh, there is a question here. Will you be there tomorrow, here tomorrow? Will you be here tomorrow? We're going to change. He asked me whether I would be there the next day. Okay, how many change? Will become his wood. Yeah. And tomorrow becomes the next day. And here becomes there. So this is quoted or direct speech and this is indirect speech or paraphrased. Mother said to son, do you think to disobey me? Do you think to disobey me? What is the tennis? This is simple present tense. And it's a question. And you have auxiliary, not modal auxiliary, but primary auxiliary. Mara asked son, said becomes asked. If he, because son is, is a man, or male. So Mara asked his son if he thought to disobey her. And we change me, her. Because me is, uh, me is the mother. So, uh, and it's female, so it becomes her. Again, mother said to son, do you think to disobey me? We wanted to change tenses, uh, the tense. Uh, symbol Britain into symbol bus. We wanted to change uh, uh, personal pronouns. We wanted to change the sentence. Uh, it's uh, interrogative form, but we, uh, we don't use interrogative form uh, during the indirect speech. So Mara said, son, do you think to disobey me? Mara asked son if he thought to disobey her. Teacher said, teacher said, Teacher said, do you know the exact answer? What about this tennis? Can you remember the tennis? Yeah. This tennis is a simple present tennis. So we're going to change into simple past. Teacher said, it's a question. Do you know the exact answer? Teacher asked students whether they knew the exact answer. So this you becomes they. Because when the teacher is talking, about, uh, is talking to his student, he's going to use the uh, personal pronoun you because they are in the classroom. Do you understand the lesson? Uh, do you know my name? Have you, uh, do the ex have you done the exercise? All this. So teacher said, do you know the exact answer? The indirect becomes teacher asked students whether or if you can optional. You have optional. They knew the exact answer. What about she said to me, What is the name of the great Makua king? It's a king, name of king. What is the name of great Makua king? She asked me what was the name of a great Mokuma king. So this is direct speech and this is indirect speech. So how many changes can you uh, feel in this sentence? First, is 
is a present tense or present uh, tense, uh, present verb. It becomes past verb. What about uh, the, 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 the form, the integrative form? Uh, she asked it. Because this is fab, she said to me, what was the exact name? She asked me this question. So she asked me what was the name of Greek. We don't, we don't use if or whether because there is an, uh, 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 there's no yes, no question. There's no, uh, 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 it's not yes, no question. For example, do you speak or will you or not, not that. But uh, yeah, uh, it's whether or wo where or uh, this one. When you have the question is whether, why, what, when, and how, we don't use whether or if. They said, what is the schedule of the examination? What is the ex is, is schedule of the ex examination? They ask it, what was the schedule of the examination? They ask it, what was the schedule of the examination? He said to me, have you been to Turkey? Have you been to Turkey? This is present perfect tense. So we're going to change into past perfect tense. But this is model accelerator verb. Uh, I mean a primary accelerator verb. Is a, there is a, a primary accelerator verb. So if you have a primary accelerator verb or uh, the, the question is a yes, no question, we're going to use if. So she asked me, he asked me if I had been to Turkey. He said to me, Change this one into ask it. He, asked, he said to me, have you been to Turkey? He asked me if I had been to Turkey. OK. What about mood of sentences? Mood. Direct speech. Uh, how, how your situation, if your situation joy or zero or uh, etc. I like I said, hurra, I have solved it. Okay. Reported speech BDF assignment. So this is joy. I like I expressed with joy that he had solved report speech BDF assignment. So this is uh, internet, uh, uh, this is uh, exclamation or I have solved the board speech be deaf assignment. So what is the tennis? We're going to change the tennis first because this tennis is present perfect tennis. We're going to change to past perfect tennis. Okay, and like I said, alas, I have violated the exam. I have violated the exam. This is sorrow. Mood, the mood is sorrow. So we're going to change this one. Alex expressed with sorrow that he had violated the exam. So this is present perfect tense. We're going to change into past perfect tense. What about Alex said, how cool the weather is? Not cold. How cool the weather is? Wonder. This is wonder. What is the mood? The wonder. So Alex expressed it with wonder that it was the cool weather. The cool weather. We're talking about the climate. So Alaga said, how cool the weather is. Alaga expressed with wonder that it was the cool weather. She said, uh, Fo, what a good watch it is. What a good watch it is. This is wonder. The mood is wonder. She exclaimed with wonder that it was a good watch, that it was a good watch, that it was a good watch, that it was a good watch. Okay, in that speech of interrogative sentences,
indirect speech of integrative sentences. Following are the basic rules of direct and indirect speech for interrogative sentences or question, uh, or question sentence. Punctuation marks, commas, inverted comma, question marks are removed. When, when you wanted to change direct speech into indirect speech, but the sentence is an interrogative, you're gonna remove a comma, inverted comma, or quotation marks. Okay, contraction that is omitted. If there is a contraction that is omitted, then leave out. Interrogative form is changed into assertive form, yes. If you have interrogative sentence in your direct speech, when you wanted to change into indirect speech, the sentence beca becomes assertive form of sentence. Uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, Ali said, do you speak English? How are we going to change this one? Ali said, if I spoke English, not question. Said is changed into ask it. Yes, said is changed into ask it or inquire it or inquire it. That's the end of our lesson. So I say to you, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your watching. We will meet, inshallah, next our next lessons on the video. So thank you. I say to you, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.